Rudy Giuliani is facing a number of legal challenges. We want to focus on the criminal complaint lodged not long ago by Noel Dunphy, a former employee of his who made some pretty shocking allegations against him in May. Now we've previously covered this, you can check the channel for our previous coverage of that. But to catch you up a little bit, she has alleged that Giuliani forced her to have oral sex and intercourse with him in addition to making pervasive, sexist, racist, drunken, anti-Semitic comments over the course of 2019 to 2021. So we knew all of that before and we also knew that Rudy Giuliani denied all of this. He denied the actions, he denied the lack of consent for whatever actions happened. And he also denied the comments. Well, we don't have proof yet on some of the most serious allegations, but when it comes to the comments, yeah, his claims that didn't happen are utterly untrue. So we're going to, to the extent that we can, read some of these. There's a lot of words that we can't say on TV, but here's one comment that he made to her. This is a transcript labeled Exhibit 14 from March of 2019. Come here, big blanks. Come here, big blanks. Your blanks belong to me, give them to me. I want to claim my blanks, I want to claim my blanks, I want to claim my blanks. These are my blanks, these breasts belong to me. Nobody else can get near these, okay? I don't care if they're flirting or they give you business cards. These are mine, you got it? Understand, I'm very effing possessive. I've gone easy on you. And so that comment doesn't just lead our commentary just because it's appalling, but also because it really sums up the nature of these comments, which is that they are grotesque and also really scary in terms of the entitlement and the possessiveness, as he pointed out. In other transcripts, he says to Dunphy, I want to own you. He said at one point he wanted like with a contract, he wants to own her literally with paperwork. Calling her my bitch, you're my whore, you're my effing slut. And then, you know, that's obviously scary. The idea that he apparently has fantasies of owning a human being and being able to have his way with them. But anyway, he goes on in March of 2019 to talk about fantasies he's having. He says, let the doorman wait outside to bring in the luggage. Wait, wait, we need a little time alone. Yeah, I need a little time alone with my girlfriend here, with my daughter with my little girl. This is of course a person he is saying is his daughter, is his little girl. That he has demanded work naked in a bikini or in American flag short shorts that he bought for her. This woman he would refer to as his daughter and his little girl. He also forced to perform oral sex on him while he took phone calls on speakerphone from clients and friends. Specifically because he wanted to quote feel like Bill Clinton. And when he was around his daughter, his little girl, he took Viagra constantly. He was also effectively always drunk and acted out on a variety of both the weird things going on in his mind as well as the various chemicals he effectively stewed his brain in on a constant basis. Look, there's other disgusting stuff and we will get to it, but Sabrina, what do you make of all this? Really? That's the only Democrat he admires, Bill Clinton. Of Makes course, sense, to some of extent. course, um, absolutely disgusting man. And and that's why I especially had that reaction about like, why are you using Twitter in this way right now? There are really, really serious allegations. I know that um, the victim has some things recorded and some things not, which is unfortunate because obviously like when there is a lack of proof um, that will be used um, against her, which is awful because in like sexual assault, sexual harassment allegations, you're not always going to have proof. A lot of these crimes in nature happen in very private settings. So yeah. I'm very uh, proud of her that she was able to record what she could, um, but also very scared for her because coming forward in general is just absolutely like opening yourself up to more harassment. It, it, it affects your identity for a while and I'm, 
I am worried about her because this was yeah. a very powerful man. So I hope that she receives as much justice as she possibly can. Um, all of this is just unfortunate. I think she even mentioned that he told her as soon as like um, he was interviewing her, he knew that he wanted to do all of these awful things to her. Like, yeah, it was instant. Well, and and when they initially like started working together, or whatever, she was experiencing previous abuse from a previous person. So this guy, who uh, at least allegedly looks like a pretty classic predator, saw someone who had previously been victimized and clearly thought that he could do it as well. Um, I agree. I'm glad that she has the tapes. Of course, it should be obvious, but. Um, like not having tapes also doesn't mean that there's not something to what you're saying. So it is good that she has it, it's not required. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just like all of this is so utterly disgusting to hold this person, you know, in this awful situation in terms of their employment, in terms of their financial situation, and to act out in all of these ways. It gets into other areas too, him uh, saying incredibly anti Semitic things about Jewish people, mocking Jewish men's genitals, mocking their marriages, mocking their traditions or whatever. You know, that's not illegal, uh, but I don't know. It seems like the right would be more angry about it. Sometimes they pretend to have an issue with anti Semitism, but it's when their people say, are saying it that they don't seem to have a problem with it at all. He had some sort of weird obsession with Matt Damon. I don't, I don't get what that's about. But anyway, um, with these transcripts, there is definitely going to be more pressure placed on him. We'll see what ends up happening. I agree with you though. My final point will be, like, like going up against someone who is who is either well liked or powerful is always going to be difficult. I can only imagine the the reaction she's getting from right wingers. And honestly, like even. We're covering this and we're talking about the parts of the transcript because we need to so that people understand what apparently happened. But even having those quotes come out again has got to be incredibly traumatic to have, like we're talking about it and I'm sure, you know, Anderson Cooper will be reading it and then she'll see that or she'll know that people she knows are seeing that. And then she's gonna have to experience again some like, like reflection, some reverberation of that trauma yet again. So, and that's what you open yourself up to when you challenge them in your in your quest for justice. You have to be traumatized again repeatedly, and that's that's what makes this you know even more hard, Sabrina. Anyway, any final thoughts? No, I just no wonder he was trying to pressure her to lie to. I believe it was the FBI and say that she didn't even know him, or just say that she didn't remember anything. And I think that's a big uh, that was a turning point for him, like in terms of um, getting more angry with her. So I'm very happy again and proud that she is able to come forward. But um, I, I hope she does receive some form of justice. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.